I'm Dr. Shaikat. Today I'll discuss about mitral stenosis. So what is mitral stenosis? Now I'm explaining with diagram. So this is the schematic diagram of the heart and here is left atrium, here is left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. And in between this left atrium and left ventricle, there is mitral valve. And narrowing of this mitral valve causes obstruction of the blood flow from left atrium to left ventricle. And that is called mitral stenosis. And the most common cause of this mitral stenosis is chronic rheumatic heart disease. In older age, it may be due to heavy calcification of the mitral valve apparatuses. Now, what is the pathophysiology of mitral valve stenosis? that the mitral stenosis is due to the fibrosis or calcification of the mitral valve apparatuses. Now what are the mitral valve apparatuses? These are the mitral valve apparatuses. Here is anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet, tendine, and papillary muscle and here is annulus. Now in chronic rheumatic heart disease there is fibrosis or calcification of these valve leaflets and there may be fusion of these leaflets or corditendini or papillary muscles so that due to this fibrosis or calcification the mitral valve orifice is gradually diminished and that's why blood is getting obstruction from the left atrium to the left ventricle that is mitral stenosis so as there is obstruction from the left atrium to the left ventricles left atrial pressure rises and as there is gradual increase in the left atrial pressure it may cause pulmonary venous congestion and in turn it may cause left atrial dilatation and left atrial hypertrophy so that this left ventricular filling becomes more dependent on left atrial contraction so any increase in the heart rate will shorten the diastole so that the time during which this mitral valve will remain open will decrease so any situations that demand increased cardiac output will increase the left atrial pressure so that's why exercise and pregnancy is poorly tolerated in mitral stenosis. Now, normally this mitral valve orifice is about 5 cm square and in severe mitral stenosis it can become 1 cm square and patients remain asymptomatic if this mitral valve is up to 2 cm square. When there is left atrial dilatation and left atrial hypertrophy, it may gradually develop atrial fibrillation. Okay, now as there is left atrial dilatation and left atrial hypertrophy and there is increased left atrial pressure, it will cause pulmonary venous congestion. This pulmonary venous congestion in turn will cause pulmonary hypertension and due to this pulmonary hypertension, there will be right ventricular overload or right ventricular dilatation. Whenever there is right ventricle is dilated, that affects this tricuspid valve. So there will be development of tricuspid regurgitation and right heart failure may develop. So this is the pathology of mitral stenosis. Now what are the clinical features of mitral stenosis? So the symptoms of mitral stenosis. I told that there is obstruction in the mitral valve so that left atrium to left ventricle the blood flow is less. So left ventricular filling is less. Due to this less left ventricular filling, the cardiac output is less. And due to this less cardiac output, we will get fatigue. And as there is less cardiac output or as there is less blood flow from left atrium to the left ventricle, so that left atrial pressure will be raised and gradually there will be left atrial dilatation and due to this left atrial dilatation, we may get atrial fibrillation, that is palpitation. And then as left atrial pressure rises and due to this left atrial pressure, this left atrial pressure will be transmitted to the pulmonary vein and there will be pulmonary venous congestion. And 
Due to this pulmonary venous congestion, we will get breathlessness, cough, and hemoptysis. Why do we get hemoptysis? We will get hemoptysis as because due to this pulmonary venous congestion, a bronchial vein may rupture and that causes hemoptysis. Now, as there is pulmonary venous congestion, that pulmonary venous congestion in turn will cause pulmonary hypertension. And due to this pulmonary hypertension, we may get chest pain. And due to this pulmonary hypertension, there will be right ventricular dilatation. And due to this right ventricular dilatation, we will get the features of right heart failure like edema, ascites. So the symptoms of mitral stenosis are fatigue, breathlessness, cough, hemoptysis, palpitation, chest pain, edema, ascites etc now what are the signs of mitral stenosis so the signs of mitral stenosis uh, the first one is pulse pulse will be irregularly irregular as there is atrial fibrillation then palpation of the precordium will get tapping apex bit and left parasternal heave why do we get tapping apex bit we get tapping apex bit as because as there is obstruction in the mitral valve left ventricular filling is less so that apical impulse produced by this left ventricle is less that cannot be filled by the palpating finger instead the accentuated fast heart sound that is produced in the mitral valve is transmitted to the apex and that is felt as a tap that's why there is tapping apex bit in mitral stenosis now why there is left parasternal leaf left parasternal leaf is there as because there is right ventricular dilatation and due to this right ventricular dilatation we get left parasternal heave then on auscultation we get loud s1 with early diastolic opening snap and we get mid diastolic murmur and signs of increased pulmonary capillary pressure we may get crepitations due to pulmonary edema now i am explaining why there is loud s1 with early diastolic opening snap this is s1 here is S2 and this S2 has two component one is A2 another one is P2 again S1 this is systole this is diastole so S1 is loud loud S1 as because we know that S1 is due to the abrupt closure of mitral valve and tricuspid valve. So the mitral valve here is thickened due to fibrosis or calcification. Due to the abrupt closure of this thickened valve, there is loud S1. And why there is early diastolic opening snap? Now, what is snap? Snap means sudden cracking sound. So during systole, this mitral valve was closed. During systole, mitral valve was closed. And in diastole, this mitral valve will open. As the leaflets are thickened in this mitral stenosis, these thickened leaflets will produce a sudden cracking sound while opening. That's why there is a early diastolic opening snap in mitral stenosis. Now the murmur. In the mitral stenosis, the murmur is low pitched rumbling mid diastolic murmur best heard at cardiac apex with the bell of the stetho with patient in left lateral position with breath holding after expiration. Now why it is low pitched murmur? The mitral stenosis murmur is low pitched as because pitch depends on the pressure gradient across the valve. So as in the mitral stenosis this mitral valve orifice is small due to this fibrosis or thickening. So there is less pressure gradient through this mitral valve. That's why there is low pitch. As it is low pitched murmur we have to auscultate with by the bell of this stethoscope. And then why it is mid diastolic murmur so we know that murmur is due to the normal blood flow through abnormal valve or abnormal blood flow through normal valve so that there is a turbulence and that turbulence is called murmur now in mitral stenosis there is a abnormal mitral valve there is thickened mitral valve or stenosed mitral valve so while blood is passing from left atrium to the left ventricle there is a turbulence and that turbulence is called murmur as that turbulence is during the diastole that's why it is called mid diastolic murmur 
Now, why breath holding after expiration? While auscultating, we tell that patient to hold the breath after expiration. Why? Because if patient holds the breath after expiration, what happens? After expiration, the lung is literally squeezed. The lung is literally squeezed. So that blood from lung will rush to this left atrium. So that more blood will flow through this mitral valve. So the intensity of murmur will be increased and we can hear the murmur easily. That's why you tell that breath holding after expiration. So the auscultation findings of mitral stenosis is loud S1 with early diastolic opening snap and low pitch rumbling mid diastolic murmur best heart at cardiac apex with the bell of the stetho with the patient in the left lateral position with breath holding after expiration. Now, what are the investigations of the mitral stenosis? In investigation, the first one is ECG. In ECG, you will get left atrial hypertrophy or right ventricular hypertrophy or atrial fibrillation. Then in chest x-ray, you will get enlarged left atrium signs of pulmonary venous congestion. And in echocardiogram, we will get thickened immobile leaflets, decreased mitral valve area and decreased rate of diastolic filling and color doppler to measure the pressure gradient across the mitral valve and to see pulmonary hypertension and left ventricular function. Now the treatment of mitral stenosis. So the treatment includes the first one is medical treatment and then surgical treatment. The medical treatment, if there is atrial fibrillation, we can give anticoagulant therapy like um, warfarin and with restoration of rhythm with digoxin or beta blocker or rate limiting calcium channel blocker. And if there is dyspnea, we can give diuretics so that pulmonary edema will be decreased. And then antibiotics, prophylaxis against infective endocarditis. And now the surgical treatment. The surgical treatment includes the first one is mitral balloon valvuloplasty. We can do closed valvulotomy, open valvulotomy and mitral valve replacement. So this is all about mitral stenosis. Hope you like this video and please give your feedback in the comments below and subscribe to this channel for next videos. Thank you.